Yo, YouTube, what's going on? It's your boy, Salvation Lee. We are back with another video, guys. And today, man, Hardpoint 101, man. How to play competitive Hardpoint, the beginner's tips and tricks, the basics of Hardpoint in competitive Call of Duty. So, real quick, shout out to everybody who joined the Community League. It's going to be a blast, and I cannot wait for it. But without further ado, let's get right into the video. Let's go. So, from a big perspective, Hardpoint is pretty simple. I mean, you hold the hill, you get points, you win the game. As simple as that, right? Obviously... You know, on the surface, it can look really straightforward and really simple, but there's so much strategy and important tactics and like nuances to hard point that at the end of the day are the X factor for why one team wins and why another team loses. So there are basically five very broad like keys to hard point or different aspects of what a team does in hard point for why they win. So the five things are rotations, map control slash setups, equipment usage like tactical stuns, nades, trophies, all that kind of combined. And then the last two are how effective teams are at trading each other's kills. And then the last one which uses the team's ability to trade kills is breaking into hills and breaking team setups. And that's kind of a culmination of all these things as a whole. And then the X factor key is kind of similarly a culmination of all of these things is how teams use the roles of Call of Duty to their advantage and how well defined team's roles are and basically just how they use the roles of cod to their advantage as a whole hard point is a fluent game mode all five of these things are happening at the same time and one team movement flows right into the next and you have to adapt pretty quickly to how teams are playing against you specifically in that map for how you want to tailor your strategy in real time so in a lot of ways the foundation for hard point is the roles that the players are playing on the map i have a whole video about the roles of cod and i'm currently in the middle of doing a series on an in-depth version of all the roles the main ar the slayer obj support route man all these things we're gonna be going through them all i have an overview video going through all of them so you can go check that out the link is in the description but basically when you understand the roles of cod with the job of a main ar the job of a slayer the job of a support player the job of an obj the job of a route man that is the basis for all things hardpoint and that leads us into our first key of hardpoint which is map control setups and spawn knowledge kind of all that combined into one basically just map control so when a team is setting up on a hill or when a team is pushing a hill either way you have to understand the map control that you have as a team and the map control that the other team has and how that influences spawns on the map so like for example on petrograd p2 by the way definition p2 means hardpoint 2 p1 hardpoint 1 it's like a common term in the competitive cod scene people will We'll call the hard points p1 p2 p3 p4 p5 it's just a faster way of saying it so p2 on saint petro for example if your team has blue control and street control control of p2 the other team is likely spawning back behind pool if none of your team is over in that area and every single map for example gunrunner p2 if you're spawning in bathrooms or in blue if you're spawning bathrooms or blue crates that means the other team is spawning lockers slash outer stairs on gun runner so every single spawn has that equivalent spawn for the other team and sometimes there's more than one so teams are setting up to hold hard points based off how these spawns work and every hard point generally has a favorable spawn so for example the most common one is the p2 on hackney the second hard point on hackney is an incredibly unbreakable hill it's like the iron man of hills because you spawn so close to the hill the other team spawns out it's incredibly tough to break that's just a very extreme example that the advantage that spawns can give towards one hard point or another so at a high level every pro understands that this setup based off their mini map awareness so they understand where their teammates are means that another team is spawning in this area on the map or on this area on the map just depending on what the setup is that they see from their squad almost at all times every pro knows where the other team's coming from so again in a similar light the next key of hard point is rotations and setting up for new hills the definition of a rotation is a team moving from one hill to the next new hill that comes up in hard point a lot of amateurs want to bunker down inside of a hill like have two or three players inside of the new hill but that's not what pro teams do at all in best case scenarios the player farthest back on the map is the player holding the new hill while the rest of the team is pushing out to give them as much map control as possible that's an ideal scenario for most teams obviously it's not possible on some hills like hills that are in the middle of the map or near the middle of the map you really can't do that because you're in the middle of the map but on hills that are like on one side or the other teams are trying to push out for map control as much as possible to, to give themselves room to spawn up if they die so for example on saint petro if you have p3 control on saint petro and you know that you guys are the only ones there you are pushing way out back towards mid back towards gate a bomb side trains and pushing out to create map control 
and giving yourself the ability to respawn up once you die then push out and still have map control and hill control even after you die the first time so like you guys watched in the roles of cod the route man is generally the guy who starts rotating first he's the player that generally will leave and start rotating from the old hill with upwards of potentially 30 seconds left on some maps that's pretty common on maps like petro ramaza and cave where you're trying to wrap out early to flip these spawns for your team and pin the other team at the back of the map at the end of the old hard point so you can push up the map have a lot of map control again it's all that game that teams are trying to play all the way through the more you play it, it'll be easier to understand how to rotate when to rotate and what route to run to rotate a lot of times what happens with amateur teams is they start rotating but they're running a wrong route that basically spawns the other team in a really weird or unnatural spot that can cause a lot of commotion on the map so when watching pro players play or really good players play pay attention to when that route man is heading out what route he's taking to try to flip those spawns for his team because that definitely matters for how successful they can actually be at flipping the spawns so the next thing is tactical nade stuns trophy system usages so this is probably one of the most underrated aspects of competitive call of duty is how good the pros and the, the best players in the world are at using their nades their stuns their smokes and their trophy system it just has to this make the one himself this is the 1v1 he could be the hero here for atlanta phase he shuts him down he has no spawn control and realistically no support from his teammates but sell gonna try and do it all there's two dips and darts away goes for the repeat there's number three sell number four what an incredible play from him somehow still alive atlanta phase with hill control the cavalry is there and sell he's not done yet pushing through the smoke the young So if you guys aren't familiar, there's a gentleman's agreements in competitive Call of Duty, which it's, it's a weird situation with how the pros make their own rules, basically. So as a, as professional players, they agree not to use certain things or only use a certain amount of things. So for example, in Hardpoint, you can only use one smoke and two trophies as a team, two stuns and two flashes because they want to keep things balanced and fair and fun versus versus spamming smokes or spamming trophies and then it just gets frustrating so basically the whole competitive world agrees to these things and we play with gentlemen's agreements even as amateurs and just for fun in tens or in gbs everybody's using these gentlemen's agreements so pro teams are very strategically using their two trophies they have because trophies again shoot out the tacticals and nades from the sky to destroy them and they are crucial to defending and breaking hard points because you're throwing down those trophies while you're in the hill so that if teams are trying to throw smokes or nades or stuns inside the hill to stun you or nade you those things get destroyed and you're safe inside the hill while you're beaming them off the headies nasty and so they're absolutely crucial how you use them of course pro players are so good at using stuns and nades to force movement and force opposing teams and players to move out of the way or get them weak so they can put one bullet into them or put one bullet into them then throw their nade to try to kill them off of a really tough head glitch or something like that those are all ways that pros use their stuns in very particular ways to their advantage game in and game out and smokes are so crucial in this game to breaking hills there's so many hills that you have to throw a smoke in the right spot at the right time to allow for your team to slip through and break hard points as your cave there's some very obvious ones with the p2 break you have to throw your smokes cut off lines of sight so you can push through and try to break these guys off head glitches which means of course there's counter strategies to trying to get your trophy systems down in those areas that teams like to throw their smokes which can be incredibly frustrating so when you're playing against a team that's really good at putting their trophies in strategic spots nothing's more frustrating because you struggle to get your smokes and your stuns and your nades down where you need them to go so like i said these last two keys kind of work together it's teams abilities to trade kills and to break hills wow some rhymes here some mad verses but basically trading kills if you guys don't know what this is trading kills is one of the most essential aspects of competitive call of duty it means when your teammate goes around a corner and gets a guy weak but the the opposing team kills your teammate you come in and kill the guy that killed your teammate that's trading kills so a lot of times the good communication will be like yo i've got your trade or somebody will ask like you got my trade or i'm going in and get my trade those are very common terms to ask obviously communication 
as a whole. I, I've done a whole video on communication in the past, you know, a few months ago, about how pro players communicate, and that's obviously another key of all Call of Duty. Of course, it's crucial and hard point, but specifically trading kills, it relies specifically on map awareness from you and your teammates and communication to communicate those pushes together and patience to communicate those pushes and the ability to trade kills patiently push together as a team towards hills and coordinating your stuns nades tacticals and trophy systems is how you effectively break kills and of course breaking hills is one of the crucial keys to being successful in hard points break this hook and alien shotzi oh no shutting it down all that's dead. all five dead all dead oh the spawns they're not done yet though. One final push for one final contest. The tournament is decided here. They got a kill. And Illy's there up top. They got him out of the hard point. Got him they out. might still be able to They're get there. in. They're they there. gotta fly. Go, go, go. Get in. They're able to get in. Everybody is into the point. 247. 247. Inside. It's madness they inside. Rocker. Oh, they got they it. do it. They do it. They do it. It's Rocker with the win. It's Matt Five, baby. So as a squad, obviously, it's incredibly important to work on getting better at trading kills. And there's a lot of examples. I've done a lot of learn from the pros videos this year. And in many of them, we talk about how to, how to trade kills or certain situations where trading kills has been so crucial to a pro team's success. So I highly recommend you guys go check out the Learn From The Pros series on the channel. And I have a lot of tips on the channel for how to improve in this game and past Call of Duty's and, and all Call of Duty's as a whole. So I hope you guys go check that out. And of course, again, the role series, I highly recommend you go check that out to get a better understanding of how the roles affect competitive Call of Duty and how lines of sight on the map and how main ARs need to hold certain angles to maintain map control and so many things like that. All of these small nuances are things that you're going to learn the more you play hard point as a squad and with your team and just competitively as a whole. And so I hope you guys enjoy the video and hopefully you can go explore the channel and join the Discord down below to find players to play with and find a competitive Call of Duty community that's hyped about COD. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you guys did, like, comment, favorite, subscribe. I really do appreciate all support. I'm trying to do this full time and I cannot do that without you guys. So I really, really do appreciate it. But as always, guys, I'm your boy, Safe Elite, and we will see you next time. I'm out.